Dr. McCormick, uh, Sheehan, to start us off. Hey, Sincere. Uh, you know, just kind of start things off. I mean, obviously you had a lot of options when you were coming out of high school. What really made UTSA the right place and what does it kind of mean to you to be repping San Antonio at your school? It means a lot to me. Um, I feel like, you know, being home, no matter, you know, they always talk about go to these big name school, but it doesn't really matter what school you go to. It's just what, if you can make a name for yourself and knowing that you can make a, uh, make a name for yourself and coming into, you know, UTSA with Rashad is, and we had that, that, uh, that bond already, just knowing that I have him on my side and we know that there's a purpose and the goal, the ultimate goal is to get, you know, UTSA on, on the map. And that's our, that's our objective, especially with having uh, Frank Harris, uh, uh, Spencer and uh, all the other guys from the 210 and being here and establishing grounds that, you know, we could just make it, make it, especially with uh, UTSA being like pretty much the only football because San Antonio doesn't have a, a NFL football team. So like I said, the fans, the fans is the most important, you know, being here in the university. So that's what, that, that's what uh, means dearly to me. There were a bunch of good running backs on the roster when you got here, but was there a point where you kind of realized like, I'm going to have a chance to get a lot of carries right away. Uh, with when My mindset coming in was just a learning mindset um, with Brendan Brady, you know, being ahead of me, like BJ Daniels, they all came, they didn't, they knew that I was a young running back. They was teaching me, leading me, you know, letting me know, let me know the, uh, uh, the job that I had to do during the, on the field, on and off the field, and building that relationship with the guys kind of helped me move forward. And when I got the opportunity, I just took it and ran with it. How do you prepare, you know, knowing that there's kind of been a lot of uh, quarterback turnover? I mean, how do you kind of prepare to deal with sometimes offenses that look different every single week? With all the quarterbacks, so we all have a, a connection with all the each and every one of the quarterbacks. It's a next, play, next man mentality, having them up there and uh, allowing them to just give them the confidence just to know that they can do the job the same as the last quarterback. And uh, we really don't, um, you know, focus on uh, like the last quarterback is the last quarterback go down and the next man up and we just like keep carrying on the same confidence and building them up. Why do you think that you've been able to have so much success already, even though you're just a true sophomore? Uh, mostly my success has come from the front line, allowing my, you know, my, my linemen to open up big holes and being able to stay patient and stay in between my tackles and uh, learning the scheme, learning the fronts and understanding where it's going to hit and just reading reaction and having that deep connection, especially with all 11, all 10 other guys, 11 other guys blocking for me. And that's, that's, that's major. That's the point where I uh, made my key, um, my, my major success in. Hey, Greg. Sincere, what did it mean to you to, to earn the uh, Earl Campbell, Tyler Rose player of the week that got announced today? It means a lot. Um, I actually just found out about it like literally two minutes ago. I didn't even know. Um, but, you know, me, I'm a humble kid. And you can even ask my, my, my mom and all my family members when it comes to award. I'm just a humble and, you know, uh, hard work pays off. And that, that clearly shows uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm continue to keep working. How are you feeling right now after the physical demands of the game Saturday with all the carries that you had? I feel good, you know. Um, and it wasn't, I didn't take, I, I learned how to recover, you know, um, after, you know, taking 37 carries, um, taking the ice bath, just recovering, just having that uh, pro mentality of just taking care of your body really. So um, I feel fresh so for Tuesday, you know, today, um, being able to come out there and perform at my highest level. You mentioned the ice bath. Can you take us a little bit more inside that recovery process? What else do you have to do to get refreshed and ready to keep rolling through the year? So I go, my first step, I go to the ice bath with Coach Philo, Ryan Philo, my guy. Uh, we take a heap, uh, we contrast uh, ice and cold, stay in the hot for three minutes, go on the ice for one minute, and I go into the training room, get recovery pump, uh, you know, do a little workout, a little stretching just to get my body refreshed and uh, ready for the next game. Do you feel like you could c carry this kind of a workload the rest of the way, or is that something that you guys have to be careful about how many carries you get and what it looks like week to week? Really, I, I'm, I just play football, really. I just, you know, the workload doesn't really matter. Um, it's, a, it's a mentality thing at the end, in, at the, end of the day. Um, whatever the coaches give me, I'm going to do my best and continue to strive and keep, continue to be great with it. The work, workload doesn't really even matter. So it's, it's just a mentality thing. Do you ever approach practice any differently to try to make sure you're staying fresh and not putting too much of a toll on yourself there? Uh, with, well, 
with my coaches, they do a great job of uh, understanding that I took a, beat, I took a beating um, Saturday and, you know, that I still need to recover. But uh, no, there's no different mentality that I take. It's just all, uh, all gas, no brakes, really. That's what Rashad Wisdom always say. Uh, all gas, no brakes. So continue to just continue to uh, fight, continue to uh, push forward, continue to do great things, you know, during practice. Yeah, because Coach was telling us that you've really outworked a lot of the other guys in practice. He said one week you put up the best metrics on that little, uh, I guess it's called the Titan. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have and and that, that came with, um, like, the first two weeks, how I felt. I uh, kind of felt heavy, and I knew that I had to work more than, than I normally do, put in that extra work, especially with the quarantine and just, you know, not able to have the same routine like, like everybody else around here. Um, but I knew that I had to put that extra work in just to be successful in the end. Good morning, Sincere. Good morning. Wondering your how often do you communicate? And, and maybe that's a bad way to put it. Maybe it's it's how often maybe are you not talking to, but your communication with Jarvion Williams. How 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 often do you guys talk? I talk to him uh, all the time. I always tell him I'm like I'm a I'm a beat your record, you know. We always have that great relationship, uh, especially with me and Jalon, Jalon being my quarterback in high school and uh, knowing his brother was, was here and I just kind of get tips and reminders from him because since he's already been in the situation. So me and him, if it, me and our connection is, the, is uh, deeper than, you know, other other connections. So with, between me and him, we always have a good time. We always talk about, he always still, even though he's on the defensive side, he's still always giving key points. If you don't mind me asking, what kind, what kind of things he advises when you guys do kind of chat? Uh, to continue working hard, um, he he emphasizes that because uh, when he's already been at the next level, he uh, he emphasizes work ethic, so extreme work ethic. And like I said, when I was talking to other guys, just working hard, doing extra stuff after practice, and just having that that mentality just to be physically, mentally stronger than uh, the rest of the, than everybody else. Have you come? Have you found yourself in a situation uh, this year where where you kind of you know you had a question about something? You know what? Who better to ask than, than that guy? And you kind of went over to him and kind of sought some advice on a particular thing. Uh, no, not this year. I haven't. Um, I just went with my running back coach. He's been giving me the key tips, really, because um, you know he still got a job to do on the defensive end. So we have a little moment, a little chat. He just tell me keep throwing the ball when he can. But other than that, I mostly get my uh, my uh, my information from my uh, running back coach, Julian Griffin. You mentioned the, the the kidding around and the back and forth that go around with the with the school rushing record. Is that important to you? Uh, it's one of the, one of my goals. Um, I always set goals every, each year. And last year I was trying to get I was trying to beat his rushing record, and I came up short. And this year I have the mentality that I know I can uh, finish strong and uh, absolutely beat his record. Well, has he said anything to you about leading the country in rushing right now? He just said, "Remain humble." Um, continue to remain humble. That's all. That's all. That's the way I've been since I was little. Just staying humble. And, and last question along those lines, sincere. Just uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting, right? The parallels with you and him. What you did at Judson. What you did at UTSA. The fact that he's a part of the program uh, now. And and when you put it all together, is it, do, do you ever kind of think about how how it, funny the the symmetry is that that here you guys are. Uh, you know, here you are doing what what you're doing, and here he is in the fold as well. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Like his background is the same, pretty much as like my background. Um, like you said, being at Justin and then kind of just following the footsteps of him. Um, you know, just being able to make a difference. You know, with the, the the status that I am currently at, and just be able to still get the advice from him because he already been through the ropes. So with him being by my side and still, you know, giving me the information that I need to be successful, and especially him already being at the next level is very, you know. It's, it's cool, kind of cool having that guy right there next to me. Appreciate it, Sincere. Thank you. Best of luck on Saturday. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, Greg, you can wrap us up. <laughs> sincere. Sincere, do you feel like the offensive line is coming together in front of you through the weeks? How have you seen that group improve as time goes on? Um, first week, they did extremely well. Kind of fell off second week. Third week, they uh, they started getting it together. And from there on, they kept having that mentality that they need to uh, push forward. I know that our coach had challenged them earlier in the year um, to, you know, do better. Um, he, he emphasizes that a lot. Um, and then even then during the huddle, during the time I have to talk to him to let him know, it's just encouraging the guys. And with encouragement, energy is contagious. Like 
everywhere you go, they know energy is contagious. So with having the front line and having them to have the dog mentality that they have the they have the ability to move people out the way, the miss assignments, you mean uh, making assignments and uh, fitting the right guys is, is very well. So throughout the whole year, they improved tremendously.